Hey guys, welcome to section 4.7. In this section, we'll learn how to factor using grouping as a technique. Let's get started. Let's start from the very beginning. We get a factoring question. The first thing we should always think about is if there is a GCF. If there is a GCF or a greatest common factor, we factor it out. And then what remains inside the parentheses begs the following question. Well, how many terms do we have? So in this lecture, we're going to talk about problems that have four terms. So we're going to assume that once we get down to grouping as a technique, the GCF has already been factored out if there is one. And if there isn't one, well, then we're down to this question already. We're also going to assume that these two formulas do not apply to our particular questions. And you'll notice when we start actually looking at the examples, you'll see that these two formulas do not apply. And therefore, the next thing we have to try is grouping. So let's go back. So grouping is a technique that's typically used with an even number of terms. You can group with two terms, but that's really just taking the GCF out. More often than not, grouping will be used with four terms or six terms or eight terms uh, or an even number of terms. Because what that's going to require us to do is to essentially group in packages of two or in pairs or in teams of two. And we can only do that when we have an even number of terms. If we have an odd number of terms, then there will be one term kind of left over doing nothing. And in that case, we cannot use grouping as a technique. So as always, always let check to see if there is a GCF. If there is a GCF, factor it out. In this case, uh, this term does not have an A, so I cannot factor out an A. This term doesn't have a B, so I cannot factor out a B. And as far as the numbers go, I can start thinking with 2, but it doesn't go into 15. 3 doesn't go into 10. 4 doesn't go into 10. 5 goes into both 10 and 15, but it does not go into 4. So already we are unfortunately out of numbers to try, so we don't have a GCF. That means that we can, uh, we actually come down to these formulas and you'll, you'll see that there are no cubes here. So the formulas don't work which is to say that the next thing we have to try is grouping, which is exactly what we're going to do in this example. So if the question asks us to factor this problem that has four terms in it, and there is no GCF, immediately we should be thinking of grouping. And grouping involves basically saying that these two terms we're going to group together. These last two terms we're going to group together. So again, we have the problem. We find the GCF of the two groups individually. So this first group, we do have a GCF. We can see that both terms have a B to give. They both have a B in common. And actually, both 10 and 15 are divisible by 5. So what we can do is we can factor a 5B out. And again, remember, whenever you write down the GCF, the first thing you do is you open parentheses. And then how do we know what goes inside? we divide each one of these individual terms by what we factored out, by the GCF. So 10 divided by 5 is 2. AB divided by B, the Bs cancel, and then there's an A left over. And then 15 divided by 5 is 3, so there's a 3. And then B divided by B is just 1, so we're just left with a 3 here. Close parentheses. Now we look at the next group we see that from 4a and 6, they're both divisible by 2, so that's my GCF. I can factor a 2 out, and the moment I factor the GCF out, I open parentheses. And to see what goes on the inside, I divide each term. So 4a divided by 2 is 2a. 6 divided by 2 is 3, with a plus in the middle. Now here's where, hopefully you remember that this was kind of the step before distribution when I when we guys were uh, or when you guys were multiplying terms out. If you remember correctly, we were given a problem like this. And then I had asked you guys to say, hey, write down the 2a and then write down the 5b plus 2 and then write down the 3 and then write down the 5b plus 2. We're going to basically be doing something quite similar here. So in order to get to here, we find the GCF of the groups, 
So this is my first group. I find the GCF, I factor it out. This is my second group. I find the GCF and I factor it out. Now this all becomes one term. Everything that's underlined here is a single term because it's all being multiplied together. And then the same thing here as well. This is all one term. Now, what is the GCF of these two large terms? What do you see in common between both terms? Well, there's a 2a plus 3 here and a 2a plus 3 here as well. And if it's in common, we should be able to factor it out. And if we do, we can factor out a 2a plus 3 and immediately open parentheses. And then to figure out what goes on the inside, well, we divide this first term by 2a plus 3, and what's left over is the 5b because the 2a plus 3 will cancel. So the 5b goes in here first, and then from the second term, if we divide out the 2a plus 3, that 2a plus 3 cancels out, and we're left with a 2, so that's what goes there. So what we've done is essentially undone multiplication, because if we were to multiply these two terms together, the first thing you would do is write it in this fashion, and then you would distribute individually to these individual terms. Then you would get to here and then say, well, I don't have any like terms to combine, so this is my answer. So this is the direction from basically south to north. That was the direction we were going in towards the end of chapter five. In chapter six, especially in this section, we're just undoing that. We're just saying, hey, we're starting with the answer from chapter five. And using some clever techniques, we're essentially grouping things so that we can go back to where we were or where we started. Another example, let's say we're asked to factor 6x squared plus 9xy minus 14x minus 21y. We can again group the first two terms together, we can group the second two terms together. And before we do that, well, let's see if there is a GCF. So if we look at the variables, this term has an x, this has an x, this has an x, but this does not. So we cannot factor an x out. All three, or actually two of these terms have a y, but these two do not. So we cannot factor a y out either. So none of the variables can be factored out as a GCF. And then if we look at the numbers, 2 goes into 6 but does not go into 9, does not, or it does go into 14 but does not go into 21. 3 goes into the first, the second, and the fourth but does not go into 14. 4 does not go in any of them. 5 does not go in any of them. And 6 goes in the first but not in any of the others. So then we have determined that there is no GCF. So we can proceed with... If there is no GCF and we have four terms, we can go down to grouping because the formulas will not work here. None of these are cubes, so no chance. So from the first two terms, the GCF is 3x. 3 goes into both 6 and 9. And then there's an x. Well, there's actually x squared here and a single x here. So both terms can afford to give up an x. So if you factor out a 3x as the GCF, we open parentheses. And then 6x squared divided by 3x is 2x. That goes inside. 9xy divided by 3x is 3y. That goes inside. And then here, we notice that this term does not have a y and this term does not have an x, so we can't really factor out a variable. But 7 divides both 14 and 21, or negative 14 and negative 21 as well. So let's say we factor out a 7. And if we factor the 7 out, negative 14x divided by 7 gives us negative 2x. Negative 21y divided by 7 gives us negative 3y. So, so far, what we've done is we've factored the GCF out of the groups. This is the first group. I factored the GCF out. This is the second group. I factored the GCF out as well. However, neither of these terms, remember, now we have to look for the GCF of the individual terms. Neither of these terms has a GCF because I cannot factor a 3x out of both these terms, or sorry, yeah, out of this term and out of this term. I cannot factor out a 2x plus 3y from this term because I have a negative 2x minus 3y. Those are not the same. However, what happens if instead of factoring out a 7, 
we factor out a negative 7. And this was a technique, or this was hinted at, at the uh, factoring overview or the introduction to factoring video. No, I remember this was in the GCF video towards the very, very end of that video. So if you don't remember this, I would pause, go back and take a look at the GCF video. At the very, very end, if you go back to the very last two minutes, probably you'll find it. Where instead of factoring out a positive seven, if we were to factor out a negative seven, we actually solve our problems and we can proceed with a question. So we start the first one, we start with the same, nothing changes, the three X factors out and this remains the same. And for the second group, if we factor out a negative seven, negative 14 X divided by negative seven yields two X, positive two X, because negative over a negative is positive. And then negative 21 Y over negative seven yields three Y again, negative over a negative. And now the nice thing that happens is because we factored out a negative seven instead of a positive seven, both these terms have something in common, the two X plus three Y two X plus three Y. So at this stage, we can factor out the GCF of these two terms. So if we factor out two X plus three Y, we immediately open parentheses. What's left from this first term when we divide out the 2x plus 3y is the 3x, so the 3x goes here. And then what's left from the second term when we divide out the 2x plus 3y is the negative 7. That goes there. And that's our answer. If we were to multiply this out, we would start by doing this, and then once we distribute it term by term, we would end up getting this as the answer. So again, factoring undoes the action of multiplication. It's the inverse operation. So let's say we have to factor 4a squared minus 21b cubed plus 6ab minus 14ab squared. And again, we can see that, let's go back to, we have a factoring question. We're checking to see if there's a GCF first. So we have 4, 21, 6, and negative 14, or 4, 21, 6, and 14. The smallest number is 4, so we only really have to try numbers up until there. Um, 2 goes into 4, but not into negative 21. 3 does not go into 4. 4 goes into 4, but not into negative 21. And then, unfortunately, uh, none of the not all the terms have all the variables. So this does not have an A, so we can't factor an A out. This term does not have a B, so we cannot factor a B out. So essentially what we've done is we've verified that there is no GCF here. Next thing we need to look at is how many terms are there. So we have four terms. We're gonna to check to see if we have two cubes in the problem. We only have one. So the formulas will not work, unfortunately. So the last thing we gotta try is grouping before we declare it to be prime. So we group the first two terms together, we group the last two terms together. And if we look at the first two terms, there isn't really a GCF available here. Two cannot be factored out, three cannot be factored out, four cannot be factored out. And this term does not have B, this term does not have an A. So there is no GCF here, and we just kind of leave it as it is. And here we do have a GCF of 2AB, but even if we were to factor that out, so let's say we do it in our heads, 6AB divided by 2AB will just be three. That's not going to be this term. So if no GCF works right away, here's another thing that you can try. You can try moving the second term in the problem all the way to the end. So essentially rearrange the terms of the problem, which is legal that you know no one gets into trouble for doing that and then try to see if you can find the GCF of the two groups that you create. So I take the negative 21 B cubed and I put it all the way to the end. So now my problem becomes four A squared plus six AB minus 14 AB squared minus 21 B cubed. And now if I were to group these first two terms together and the last two terms together, Something neat happens. I can factor out a 2a of these two terms. Hopefully you guys can see that slightly more clearly now. And if we were to divide 
4a squared plus 6ab by 2a, we're left with 2a plus 3b on the inside. And then from here, I can factor out both 14 and 21 are divisible by 7. So I can factor a 7 out, and in fact, b squared as well, because this has b squared and this has a b cubed, so I can factor a b squared out for sure. However, if I were to do that, I'm left behind with a negative 2a minus 3b on the inside. Now the issue is that these two binomials that I have on the inside don't match, so I cannot proceed by factoring them out, which is what we've been doing with grouping this entire time. When these two terms match, then I always factor them out and the problem finishes in one more step. But remember again, at the end of the GCF video, I mentioned that if the positive term does not work, try the negative, maybe that might work. So instead of factoring out a positive 7b squared, if I were to change that to a negative, that reminds us that all the signs on the inside will flip. So the negative will become a positive, this negative would become a positive as well. And now we have what we need, 2a plus 3b, 2a plus 3b. These two giant terms, that first term, and this second term have a GCF, 2a plus 3b. If I were to factor it out and open parentheses right away, from this first term, if I were to divide out a 2a plus 3b, I would be left with a 2a, so that goes inside. And from the second term, if I were to divide out 2a plus 3b, I would be left with a negative 7b squared on the inside. And that's it. We factored this into its two factors. And if we were to multiply these two, we would essentially just trace the exact same step going back to where we started. I believe I have one more, yes. So up until now, all the examples we've seen, you notice that we didn't really have a GCF. So this is not to let you to believe or lead you to believe that there are no GCFs in these problems. So here's an example of one where you have to factor something, you have a factoring question, and the first thing you should think of is the GCF. So if we rewrite the problem and then notice 16, 24, 30, and 20, these are all even numbers. So I should at the very least be able to factor a two out if not some other even number. And if I factor a two out, this gives me an eight, this gives me a 12, this gives me a 15, and that gives me a 10. Not only that, I also have an A in each term. All four terms have an A in them. So I can factor out a two and an A. And if I do that, do I have X? I do not have an X here. And I do I not have an X or a Y here. So I cannot factor out an X or a Y. So this is it. My GCF is 2A. Once I factor it out, what's left behind from this first term is 16 divided by 2 is 8. A cancels with the A. So the XY comes down with the term. Negative 24 divided by 2 is negative 12. A cancels this A out. And then the Y just comes along for the ride. 30 divided by 2 is 15. The a's cancel out when you divide them. And then negative 20 divided by 2 gives us negative 10. The a's also cancel out, leaving behind just the x. Now we're back to square one. We don't know how to factor this. However, we've already taken the GCF out, so we ask ourselves the following question. How many terms are there in the problem? Well, there's four terms. This is the GCF, so this is just going to keep coming along for the ride. We're not going to include this as one of the terms in our count. So we have four terms, and we see none of these are cubed. So the formulas are not going to work, so the only thing we can try is grouping here. So we can group the first two terms, group the last two terms, and then from the first two terms, we see both 8 and 12 are divisible by 4. And then they both have a y to give up. This term does not have an x, so I can only factor out a y. So if I factor out a y, 8xy divided by 4y gives me 2x. And then negative 12y divided by 4y gives me a negative 3. Close parentheses. From these two terms, I can see that I have a 5 in common because 5 divides both the 15 and the negative 2. So 15 divided by 5 gives me a 3. Negative 10 divided by 5 gives me a negative 2, and then the x just comes along. Now here you'll notice that these two don't look the same. 
So what we can do always in mathematics is we can rearrange terms as long as we keep the signs the same. So what that means is we can see that 3 minus 2x is the same as negative 2x plus 3. All I did was I rewrote the 2x first, but it was negative here, it is still negative here, and the 3 was positive here, I just wrote it after the 2x. So now my problem really becomes 2a parentheses, and this was the GCF, so again, this never we never lose it, we just keep it along, 4y times 2x minus 3 plus 5 times negative 2x plus 3. All I did was I just rearranged these two terms, or reordered them. And now again, we see that in order to continue on with this grouping problem, this binomial and this binomial need to be identical, but they're not. So I cannot proceed the way the problem currently is. However, if we factor out a negative 5 instead of a positive 5, this sign will change to a positive, this sign will change to a negative, giving us exactly what we need. So instead of factoring out a plus 5, we can factor out a negative 5. And if we do that, from this term, I have a 2x minus 3 that's common to the 2x minus 3 from this term. So I factor it out, I open parentheses, and then from this first term, if I were to divide out the 2x minus 3, I would be left over with a 4y, so that comes here first. From this term, I could factor out or divide out a 2x minus 3, and I'll be left with a minus 5. So that comes here. So that's my answer. Now, up until now, the other examples we've seen, we only really had two factors. So for instance, this one, we had two factors. We had earlier problems in the other sections, uh, or not in the other sections, in the previous video, where we only ever got two answers at the end. That is not a necessity. You can have three factors, you can have seven factors, you can have 70 billion factors, you can have as many factors as you like. This is just an example of perhaps two times three times seven. In another video I shared that 42 factors to two times three times seven, this is the analog for that. And the 42's analog would be this original problem. So if you were to factor this out, you would get three terms as the factors, 2a, 2x minus 3, and then 4y minus 5. Now, the last thing that I would like for you to note is that the GCF of the entire problem, 2a, it stayed in the front the entire time. It never vanished. And this is quite frequently what a lot of students make a mistake on, which is once they factor the GCF out, they assume that it's just gone, that it just disappears or it cancels out. That's not the case. Any GCF or any greatest common factor that you factor out always just sticks around at the beginning of the problem. Once you factor it out, you have to keep it there. It does not vanish. That's it. If you have any questions about grouping, please feel free to reach out.